The world of Destiny is big, a lot bigger than presented in game. Abandoned space stations, unique creatures, some made of pure arc energy, and habitats on distant moons litter the words of Destiny's written lore. I do understand the limitations of building such a complicated and massive universe in game like Destiny, but I have always wished, like many people, we could experience some of the weirder, more unique locations. A lot of people want to leave our solar system, and I do think that would be pretty fun. But there are so many places close to the home that we have yet to explore. One of the places I would love to see used as a dungeon one day is Coincidus, or A113, which may still be under control of the Nine. I'll get into this space station a little bit more later. The Nine are one of the most mysterious entities we have seen in-game. Well, I guess we've never actually seen them. I don't even know if it's possible to see them, to be honest. But we have seen their motivations and been told their messages. So I wanted to make this entire video about them, to dive deeper into who they are and to clear up any confusion. A lot of new players haven't really had the chance to see anything from the Nine firsthand. Destiny went free to play with Beyond Light, and that's also when things got sunset. And the last interaction with the Nine we have had was the Prophecy Dungeon in Season of Arrivals, which came out right before Beyond Light. Some people may consider the 30th anniversary, but I consider that more Xur and Star Horse. We don't know how much the Nine really were involved with that. And to be honest, at that point, some of the Nine were still taken by the Witness along with their respective planets. This isn't even the first time Bungie has used the Nine in one of their games. While their function is a little different, there was a group called the Nine in Bungie's 1997 game Myth. There, the Nine were a group that led wielders of light against the darkness. The Nine and Destiny are much different though, so let's start with clearing up some confusion about them. The Nine are not all powerful or even close to being gods. I heard that a lot on my TikToks over the past few years when I'd make a video about the Nine or somebody would ask a question about the Nine. They would always suggest or even flat out say that they were just as powerful as the Traveler or the Witness. They are not even close. I don't even think they're as powerful as Savathun, Oryx, Kallus. In fact, they are very limited in what they can and can't do. They do seem to have some foresight into the future as proven with the Prophecy Dungeon, but how they do this is unclear at the moment. And this is why they have people like Xur and the Emissary interact with us instead of talking to us firsthand. The Nine are dark matter that became sentient. That's, that's all they are. Basically what happened was these particles of dark matter were floating through the universe and became trapped in the gravitational pull of different planets in our solar system. There, they spent millions of years ping-ponging back and forth from the core of the planet to its surface until life formed on Earth. They became more and more aware as life evolved on Earth. And once sentient life, humans, evolved, they themselves became sentient. If life ceases to exist in our solar system, the Nine also cease to exist. Or at the very least, lose their sentience. This has caused the Nine to divide into two factions, one that wants to help us and the other that wants to find a way to free themselves from us. The Nine that want to help us are the ones that are sending Xur and Orin, the Emissary, to speak to us. The Nine that want to leave are the ones that helped Gaul attack the Traveler. I'll get more into both of these a little bit later in the video. The Nine can't even interact with normal matter. They need agents to help do their bidding. There has been cases where they can create and synthesize normal matter though. Even with the Nine that want to help us, we are not sure what their motivations are. I think they understand that keeping us alive are their best chances of survival, but do not think they are acting on altruistic motivations. They want to study us and the light and find a way to use the light for themselves. Their goal is to find a way to use light to construct bodies for themselves so that they could freely move and not be dependent on other life. The Nine created Xur and the Emissary. Both used to be part of humanity. While Xur was human, Orin was an Awoken. Xur is part of a group known as the Jovians, and there are more like him out there. Given the name, it's likely that they live near one of the gas giants, or it's even possible their name implies where they were created. 
We do not know how many Jovians are out there, but we do know the Nine consider them a failed experiment. Xur and the other Jovians chose to be experimented on, to become what they are. We are not sure exactly how they were made, but Xur says this. We came up from dust and burrowed into flesh for warmth and became something new. Orin turned emissary would be a successful experiment done by the Nine. We do not know exactly what the process or experiment that took her from a guardian, a sunbreaker titan, to who she is now. But we do know she has probably had more real deaths than anyone else in the history of Destiny. She went from human to disembodied consciousness to an awoken to sunbreaker titan to emissary. Before Guardians really knew about the Nine and also the players, they did have sort of an alliance or at least an understanding with the Awoken of the Reef. Queen Mara spoke with them and even gave them a gift, Skolas. But the Nine may not have liked the gift because they released him and caused the events of the House of Wolves DLC in Destiny 1. The cell cracks open. Skolas, Wolfkel, stumbles out and crashes to his knees. He tries to leap at the creature before him, the shape in the fog, to show it why it should be afraid. But the weight of grief smashes his legs against the cell. The rage upon him beats him to the floor. He falls on all four hands, his mighty armor thundering against itself. His house of wolves is enslaved. His people have been played, and it was his hubris, his would-be cunning that did it. While the other houses fought for their future on Earth, Throwing themselves at the great machine, Skolost wasted his people in games of betrayal and ambition. Bitter pride brought a bitter end. If Skolost were a Kel, he would ask his Archon to dock him. Ether hisses in his mask and it tastes cold, so cold. He looks up at the tiny hooded shape before him. The cell's mist is clearing. He can see. I believe that I am here, the creature says. To Skolas's ears, it has a strange voice, a strange accent. It speaks his language. I have a clear purpose. I cannot explain it. Forgive me. From beneath its hood, tiny fingers of shadow probe the air. Skolas rises up to smash it to show his strength because the alternative to violence is waiting for violence to come from a universe that has neither respect nor compassion. But he checks himself. His ambitions have brought him here to this cell, in this strange place. Only it's not so strange, is it? It's the hold of a catch. The queen? He says to the thing, you work for the queen? The nine made me aware of my purpose, the creature says. If I am here, then it is because the queen sent you to the nine, and they wish you sent back. The nine sent Xur to release Skolos and send him back to the reef. For what purpose we aren't really told. It could be they wouldn't accept the Queen's apology gift, or maybe they just wanted to see what would happen if a Fallen acquired Vex technology and if they could also use it for their purposes. The Nine further caused a rift between them and the Reef with the death of Shor Ido. We do not know who killed Mara's former girlfriend, but a strange coin was left on her body and her bow, Wishender, stolen. This led Mara and her queen's wrath to blame the Nine, and most importantly, Xur. Orin, now a guardian and would one day be the perfected Nine's experiment, confronted Xur and broke his back, forever causing him to be hunched over. Yes, uh, it, it is canon that Xur had his back blown out by a Titan, but, I mean, have you seen Orin? I'd honestly say uh, Xur was kind of kind of lucky. Um, yeah, don't come at me. There's people out there that do not know this, but the Nine actually caused the extinction of the Ahamkara. After the great Ahamkara hunt, there were still a few left around outside of just Riven. The Nine had kept them hidden and away from prying eyes of the Vanguard and the Reef, so they could use them later. When Oryx arrived in the solar system and took Riven, the Nine freaked out. They knew if Oryx reached his goal, all life in the solar system would be wiped out, and so would they. They didn't want the Taken King to have even more power, so they made the decision to kill the final Ahamkara. These Ahamkara may be what is being referenced in the Season of the Wish artifact. Unverified. 
Seven Ahamkara that evaded and slew their light bearer pursuers are still unaccounted for. This report is believed to be an error in its totality. So while I've gotten questions asked to me on TikTok, do I still think the Ahamkara are out there? I do not think so, except for the ones that we have seen thus far in Season of the Wish with the eggs. The Nine are also responsible for Gaul attacking the last city. I say the Nine, but one rogue member of the Nine went alone and blinded the Vanguard and the Guardians to the Cabal's incoming fleets. His goal was to watch to see if Gaul could in fact steal the light for himself and wanted to do the same for the Nine. This member enraged the other eight members, because his actions could have led to the extinction of not only all life, but the destruction of each planet. Because Gaul was allowed and helped by this member of the Nine, he was able to deploy the super weapon, the Almighty. For those that did not play before Beyond Light, the Almighty was a Cabal super weapon that was removed and destroyed during Season of the Worthy. The Cabal would set it outside a system star and siphon the energy. They would harvest this energy for fuel and lead to two possible outcomes. Either they would power the weapon up and blow up planets with its massive energy beam, kind of like Star Killer Base from Star Wars. I'm just going to be honest here. Kind of like Star Killer Base from Star Wars. And I'm just going to be 100% honest here. Star Wars The Force Awakens did come out like two years before Destiny 2 did. Or the other option would be that they would extract so much energy from the star it would lose its magnetic field and go supernova, destroying everything. Which I'm gonna be honest, we kinda don't want that to happen. Aldrin may be emo, but he's not that kind of emo. The Nine, or at least some of the Nine, wanted to warn us of upcoming problems we would face. So they gave us the Prophecy Dungeon. This dungeon was foretelling of Aramis's threat and teaching us that darkness was not really the bad guy. Throughout the dungeon, we learned that utilizing both light and dark is the only way to succeed. This prepared us for Beyond Light, when we would have to take charge of Stasis and defeat Aramis. And uh, that's kind of the end of the Nine as we've had in-game. No mention of them since Season of Arrivals, three and a half years ago. So a lot of new players have never had any real interactions with the Nine outside of Xur and replays of the Prophecy Dungeon. Since we've gone over the history of the Nine, let's go a little bit further and talk about some interesting information about the Nine. Have you heard of Cohen Sidus? I kind of hope you have because I did mention it at the beginning of this video. Um, so uh, check marks to those who, who have retention, retention rates very high. It's a space station stranded out where the moon Circes used to exist. No one knows its purpose or who made it, and officially it doesn't even exist. What we do know is there are portals called keyholes that go to other dimensions. The few that have entered these portals have either been lost, came out screaming, or had their entire bodies ripped from the atoms. At one point in time, Dead Orbit was in charge of this space station, and then the Awoken, and then Crota, and now the space station fell into the hands of the Nine at one point, and they may still be using it. They used it for experimenting on creating living things from nothing. It started small, with simple atoms, then a black tar oozed out of the keyholes, speeding up till it erupted in black sludge. Then shapes came out, different fractals. Finally, beans, and I'm quoting beans, came through. They died quickly, but they had the structure of a living thing, but with multiple throats and plant cells. Then finally, a tube creature came through it. It lived for a short time before perishing. This one had something similar to a circulatory system. No other creatures have come through the portals since. It's safe to assume that the Nine have stopped their experiments. There has been a theory for a while that unknown space, the realm of the Nine, is Anna Harmony. Anna Harmony is a planet we were told about back in the Books of Sorrow. A planet orbiting a black hole with silver lakes. We see on the director that Eternity is a black hole and we go through a wormhole to get to unknown space. Anna Harmony was home to the Harmony people, which of course, the Hive wiped out. They were also probably the most technologically advanced of any of the civilizations the Traveler blessed after the Witnesses people. Unknown space I do not believe is another dimension. My main reasoning for this is that part of the Nine want to create another dimension and leave our solar system and be free of the chains of life. 
So if they've already created this dimension, why are they still around bothering us? So whether or not Unknown Space is on a Harmony, I do believe it is another planet in our universe somewhere. Before I end this video, I just want to say we aren't 100% sure if Pluto is counted as one of the nine. There is the chance that the Sun itself is a member and not Pluto, since Pluto is no longer a planet by our new standards. Please don't tell Jerry Smith, I know he's very, very passionate about Pluto. The Nine have been around a long time and were a big part of Destiny 2's story until Beyond Light. They might not have always been front and center, but they always had their hands in a lot that happened to us in story. The Nine could be brought back after Final Shape in some way. They may even get more aggressive once the Witness is turned into a terrible exotic that 99% of you will put in your vault. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment, like, subscribe, and remember, hunters never die. Hunters never die. Hunters never die.